Hi everybody, it's Abby again from Abby's Den and I'm here now with a different kind of machine today. It's a John Lewis Special Edition. I think it's Special Edition because it's a colourful one as opposed to the regular JL1 Monos which are just white. Okay, the difference with this machine is it has a front loading but the principle of threading it up is exactly the same as I showed you on the Brother which had a top loading bobbin so you saw the bobbin at the top there here it's hidden away and I'll show you now so if I remove this extension box and inside there if you didn't know you can pop your uh, uh, accessories in there you've got a cover plate here that hides your bobbin and this is your bobbin case now you don't have one of these bobbin cases on a top loading machine it actually is sat there and it's part of the machine and hidden away so you have that slit and that's your tension spring okay so we're going to thread up this machine and we're going to fill up a bobbin so let me show you how to do that so again on here we have our spindle to hold our thread but on this one actually we have two so let me show you how to thread up this machine. So the principle is the same. So what we do is we want our thread coming from behind and we will feed it across this part, which is our tension spring. This tension spring will form tension on our thread and it will feed it through onto the bobbin. Now, the first thing we need to do, we need to disengage that part of the machine as we did last time. And the way to do it on this machine is by pulling the hand wheel. Pop it out like that and it's very easy. So around the tension spring, make sure it's properly in there. And then we lift up our bobbin and we look for that hole between the flanges. And we are going to feed the thread between the flanges. I'm losing my thread there. Feed the thread through the flanges and up through that hole. And maybe I should put, switch the machine on and we're going to press and fill up some of the bobbin. Okay, that's enough. And let's cut away the excess thread there and let's fill it up. Now, on these basic machines, you didn't see it on the brother one, what you do sometimes get is an uneven feeding so I sometimes use my finger to guide it up and down. So let's see what happens. Okay, we've got fairly even feed there. So we're going to push that back and we're going to pop our handle back in. So that's our machine back engaged again. So take that off and let's cut a long tail thread. We'll leave that to the side for a minute. So we're going to completely uh, re-thread the top. So the two things I've asked you to look for when we're threading up the machine is making sure our thread take up lever there is up and our presser foot lever is up. So our presser foot is out of the way and that releases the tension discs there. And this, Doing it this way will also make sure that you don't get that little nest of threads underneath your fabric. And you know when you start off sewing a row of stitches, sometimes you get a few tangles of thread. This will avoid doing that. Okay, so we're going to unhook that from the tension spring, bring it round the guide, down, follow the arrows. We're going to swing it round and pull it towards me, bring it down, and now you've got two hooks on this particular machine. So those two hooks, again, correspond to the two threads here that we might have when we're using a two, uh, twin needle. Now, because there are two hooks, it doesn't matter which one you use. The idea, as I've explained before, you want to keep that thread vertical. So it doesn't matter if it comes from the left or the right. So make sure everything's in. And there we go. So now... Popping that in, now on the other machine we put it in anti-clockwise, but I've checked the manual and we need to make sure it goes clockwise. 
So we're going to go clockwise, pop it into our case, and there's the slit. We're going to follow that slit and then bring it round to the eye. Hear that click? And I know that thread's in there. If I pull on that thread now, I can feel a slight pull. And just as a side tip, and I don't really want anyone to be playing with this, you do not need to play with the bob intention at all unless you really know what you're doing. So the uh, screw here is your tension for your bobbin. You do not need to do anything with that. You should feel a nice tight uh, taut pull on there and that's enough. So now the other thing I want to explain about this if you turn that over, your bobbin just falls out. Now on here, you have a lever. So this lever, what it does is it helps you, if you look inside, I don't know if you can see, but if you look inside, when I pull that lever, there's like a claw at the top. And basically what it does is it claws down and grabs the flange. So I'm going to put that in again, so make sure it's going clockwise. Put it through the slit, pull it round, clicks into position. Let's just cut away the extra thread. And we're going to pull on that lever there. And if I tip that upside down, the bobbin doesn't come out, stays in position. So there's a tip. And the other tip is Remember how I explained about this hook being at the top? That's the start of a new stitch or the end of the last stitch. So it's so basically, if I was to say it's at zero point till 12 o'clock, when you put this case back in, it will click straight in. You won't have to fiddle. And there you go, there's the click. Again, let's hold on to the top thread with my left hand. And we're going to do a full rotation with my right hand and watch this red thread come up. There we go. And that's the thread come up. Okay, put them between the toes, pull them out to the back, and I would say up northwest. Close the front door, put the extension table back on, and we're ready to sew.